Well, hello and welcome back everyone to Unchained with No More Chains. Today's topic, we are talking again about the team at Confluence, but we're talking about Pepe game, right? This is a web-based game that the team has come up with and it really showcases their skills and their abilities in being versatile in the gaming space, but also in the blockchain space. Being able to create and integrate on-chain tokenomics into the game, right? So, Pepe game, right? They did a pre-sale, and in that pre-sale, they sold, you know, it was like uh, certain holders were able to get like 0.05 ETH worth of this token. Um, but there's also this token is on Polygon, and so there's no liquidity, I don't believe, there. But this is just kind of like a, a, a unique experience. So they put it on Polygon so that you can save on gas by claiming, right? If it was on ETH, you'd have to pay ETH gas every time you played, played around and claimed your token. So let's jump into the game itself. Let's take a look at it. And here you go. This is the website. This is thepepegame.com. You can check that out for yourself. You go on here. There's some information about everything. Um, you know, uh, their links, Etherscan link up here. So you can go there. Um, so basically what you're gonna need to do in order to get on this, you're going to have to have a Space Pepe in your wallet, all right? And that collection is by, you know, Matt's son, Nate. It was a, a really cool collection, and they also did a game called Maze Mentor where you're able to win mints for that NFT, which was really cool as well. It was a mobile game. You had to complete a maze. At the end of it, you got you found this chest, and, uh, you know, a Space Pepe came up out of it. But on the back end, they tracked your wallet, and through, you know, through sending an email, they would ask for what email or what address you wanted to mint from. And then they would put that in the contract. You're able to go and mint 10 free NFTs. The gas was super amazing because Nate is such an excellent coder. He's very good with blockchain technology. He was able to, uh, you know, have just the stuff he does is just really amazing. Um, such cheap gas. You look at the morph he did for Cubex. Um, setting an approval for the gold cards and then morphing the gold card and burning it and then more minting uh, another NFT. I mean, it was just super cheap. And same thing goes here. And so they did this on this Pepe game on Polygon so that you would save on gas every time you claim because you have to claim a lot in the game, right? So here we go here. Um, we have the website here. You have all this stuff, the home tokenomics, how to buy roadmap, all these different things, a connect button and a play now button. I'm just gonna go ahead and click the play now button uh, it's going to bring up the Unity game itself. And then you just click Connect. Signing in with your wallet. Again, make sure that your wallet is set up on the Polygon network and make sure that you have Matic on the Polygon network, not an e not not on the Ethereum network, right? So my MetaMask is popping up right now. It's asking for a signature request in that wallet. I'm going to hit Sign. And then it's going to verify that you hold the space Pepe. You said, see, it says you need a space Pepe and Matic to play. So you see that right there. Um, so a little bit, the space Pepe, they're actually very affordable. So I'm trying to pull them up right now on another browser. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over. Okay, so here is the space Pepe collection. You can see that right here. Um, 0 0.005, very cheap. You can get pick these up. You can scoop these up and then get into this game, right? So here again, the game, you want to jump in. Again, make sure there's Matic in your wallet on Polygon Network. You can search other videos on that. It's really simple. I just want to really talk about the Pepe game here. So here we go, play to earn, and you just use Spacebar. And it's such a simple, uh, a simple user interface on it. So here we go. Oh, hit Spacebar again. Restart, space bar to jump, and then you're collecting these frogs in the game, right? And those frogs are pegged to the token, the Pepe game token, right? You saw I died already. It is not easy to have a continuous run, let me tell you. I was playing for a while last night trying to get a decent run. Whoa. Probably one of my better runs here right now. Uh, you, so you're collecting these frogs. You want to watch out for the, the plants there. Um, watch out for the snakes as well. Oh, man. 
Oh, this is probably one of my better runs. I know I just missed a frog. The character starts to speed up really quickly. Oh, there I go, huh? All right, so back in it. And so you can just keep playing over and over again. But again, the reason why I wanted to do this video here is because I wanted to showcase the versatility and the uniqueness of this team and all the stuff that they're really doing in the space. Again, you have a lot of NFT projects out there that were promising a game. And this project here not only has a game, but they have multiple different games. They have multiple different kinds of games. They're able to do apps. They're able to do, I mean, anything you can think of, they're able to do that. And so it's just something to showcase all that they're doing because some people will look at their project and there's just so much going on. There's so much information that they get lost because they're just doing so much. They're doing so much more than any NFT project that I've really seen. And so they're doing it different as well. Um, that's another thing I wanted to kind of highlight, right? Is that this team isn't trying to do like um, hype or, or influence or pumps or anything like that. They're not trying to market this um, the traditional Web3 way, I guess you could say. They're not trying to get a whole bunch of influencers on it to pump up the price of their NFTs. No, they've built these games out of their own pocket. They didn't receive money from Mints to build all the gamifications. And if you're trying to figure out all the gamifications that they did, they're doing VR games, regular PC builds. I mean, anything you can think of, they're able to do it. And then they have their own companion app, which is going to be able to be a conglomerate of all the scorekeeping and, and things of that nature. So no matter where you are in their massive metaverse universe, you're going to be able to see all the scores in one app, right? And that's really unique and really special. So again, the versatility of this team is truly amazing. They're not doing it like anyone else in the space. Just, just know that. So some people come in and they're like, yeah, but what are you going to do to get volume in your project? What are you going to do to pump up the floor price so we can sell our NFTs and flip them? This team is not so focused on the flippability of NFTs, but rather the marketability of NFT technology as access to business, to real business. So you see all these games, right? Well, there's a reason that these games exist and the versatility of the team to push these games out. They're doing a lot of different things. And let me turn down the volume here really quick. So they're doing a lot of different things. For instance, in the Confluence Metaverse, you're going to be able to pay a couple bucks to get a skin here, to get a U-Bot there. And all those microtransactions are going to add up. And these games, another thing, are free to play. So they're not token gated. You don't need to have, uh, apart from the, the, the Pepe game here, for the massive universe, metaverse, you're not going to need a specific NFT to get in and play. It's going to be the ability to have anybody come in. Anybody can spend money in there. You can work out partnerships with the with the founder to create business opportunities within there. Whether it's you know poker or or you know other mini games in there that you have people. Maybe you have a project and you want to host a mini game and and let's say you come up with a mini game inside of the metaverse that costs money to play and has a certain type of uh, reward in it right well you could set up a partnership with the team with Matt Vegg. you could reach out to him and do whatever you know whatever deal he does traditionally there's a 70 30 split he's talked about it a lot on his AMAs basically what that means is that whatever revenue comes from whatever gamification you've had that you've hired them out to build and the partnership there is 70 30 basically 70 percent of that revenue goes back to you and 30 percent goes back to them and their team for the the maintenance of the servers and all those different things so that's really really good and really fair so one cool thing is you know like for instance um the team has made me a skin for fray x for one of the guns that will be on sale in there and anybody could get you know a a chain breaker or no more chains gun SMG skin, right? And so think of it on a small scale, but also on a big scale. If you can think it, they can build it. And this is why I showcase this game and all the other games is so that you can see the versatility of the team and their capability to build and push builds out, not just for their own projects. Remember, they were partnered with Cubex before they took Cubex over, and they were the ones that were hired out to build Cubeverse, to build Splat, to build Swarm, which is a VR game. And just think about this. You can hire them out. You can partner with them 
to build something for your project. One project that partnered with them was Rara Pepe Yacht Club, right? They had a survivor game. And so they were about to do a, a for the Rara Pepe's, I think it was a zombie mint or something like that. And so they had this gamification set up. And, you know, because we were CubeX holders and holders in UASO, we were able to go play the game as well. And so that was really cool. It was a really unique experience. It was a first person shooter type game. Uh, where they were able to run around and, and kill the zombies in a in a lab. And it was really cool. I mean, think about this. If you have a project and you want to get a, a game built and you wanna you wanna have a great solid partnership, then reach out to the team, reach out to Matt Vague, Nate Vague, Mr. Diesel. I always put their links in my description for their socials. You can reach out to them. They're super easy to talk to. They will answer any questions. And again, I showcase their stuff because I really believe in what they're building. I think they're really building something different in this space. And it's worth highlighting because they're not doing it the way everyone else traditionally is doing it in Web3. As I mentioned, they're not, they're not having it hyped up so they can just pump the floor price. What they're trying to do is actually build build equity into the NFTs themselves, right? And so that the NFTs themselves will be valuable to hold. Why is that? How does that work? What does this business plan look like? Well, let's take a look at Cubex, right? We're in the middle of a morph. So Matt and his team took over Cubex. They bought it from the old team, TFG, Mo and Doug. TFG, Mo and Doug built it up to where it was. And then Matt said, you know what? I, I, can, I could probably streamline the games for this and take this to the next level. And so they had a partnership. They had a deal. Matt took it over. And now he's consolidating the collection to a lower size. And once that lower size is achieved and... It will be the revenues from in-game will be attributable to those NFTs, that smaller, more manageable size collection, right? And how does that work? What does it look like? Again, so you've heard me talk about the different avenues that you could partner with them in, right? You heard about the game skins or a mini game that you have to pay to play and you get some sort of reward or whatever it may be, a poker tournament. Maybe you have you have them build a poker app in their metaverse for you or maybe you have um, streaming streamable content and you need uh, you have subscribers paying, right? So all these different things are creating in-game revenues, right? And so for Cubex, the goal is to create a Cube World DAO with the smaller collection. And so then the holders of the smaller collection will be owners of that business. And so let's say as a DAO, we come up with ideas to pitch to Matt and say, hey, we'd like to see this in Cube World. We'd like to see this type of mini game in Cube World where you have to pay a small amount to play and there could be rewards or on-chain tokens or whatever. And you see that they can do on-chain tokens because you see it right here in the Pepe game. That's why I'm showcasing this. And so just think of that. Revenues coming in, right? 70-30. So you have 70% going to the Cube World DAO and 30% going to Matt and his team for maintaining all of the gamifications, right? Think of that. Think big when you think of this stuff. I'm just giving out little examples, but if you can think it, I'm sure they can build it and they could implement it into Cube World and it doesn't stop there. So just think of Shiba Social Club. Think of Party 8 Billionaire Club. Think of Bunny Buddies. Think of Goonies Gang. Think of the different IP that each one of them hold and how you could actually build out a world that has gamifications that create in-game revenue. When then What those in-game revenues do is they come back to the lower collection size after the collections have been consolidated. And so each project will be an individual LLC, an individual DAO that creates in-game revenue that gets poured back to the holders. And so again, it's not about hyping up the floor price so that people can flip and do those things. What Matt is trying to do, it's a different type of business model for Web3. It's an actual business model, but implemented in a Web3 way. And so you have to really look outside of the box when evaluating this. Because some people will come in and say, well, how are you going to lift up the floor price? How are you going to lift up the floor price? They're not focused on lifting the floor price. They're focused on building to a point that actually gives revenue to the holders. Now, in the long run, once revenues are starting to be poured back in, I'm sure it will be more appealing for people to say, wow, you know what? I think I want to hold those NFTs as well so I could be part owner in what is happening here. So just think about that. But you have to really step outside of the box to wrap your mind around it because all we've ever known in Web3 is, hey, this influencer is pumping this. Hurry up and get in. Or this alpha caller is calling this. 
hurry up and get in. And so basically, like, that's all there is. But that's really a narrow field, right? There's so much more opportunity here when you really step outside of the box, right? And that's why I like to shoot these videos to help inform and educate and empower on these different things because it is really unique. It's different. It's special. And I think it could really revolutionize Web3 as a whole because it's different. It's different and it's not different in a bad way. They're not really taking a huge risk here because this is their business. They build games. They didn't have to do a land sale mint. They didn't have to do an NFT mint to pay for their gamifications. They built their gamifications and had them available for users to play them before they ever did an NFT mint. And that's something worth noting. That's different. That is breaking the traditional Web3 mold and actually giving something tangible back to holders before ever asking a dime from them. And more than that, they're really focused on just bringing value back to their holders. And so this is really unique. It's really important. And that's why I wanted to kind of show you this game here. This game is truly cool. So let's get in and play a little bit more, right? All right. <laughs> I get a kick out of this. I mean, if you think about this too, here I am playing this game and I'm collecting these frogs. I'm earning tokens and you can claim these tokens at the end of your round or you can keep playing and building up tokens. I'm at, uh, I think it says 85 tokens right now. And I don't know exactly the uh, math behind it. So I don't know when I hit claim how many of the Pepe game token I'll actually get per frog that I collect but it's something pretty cool that they're doing. And so here you think the sky is truly the limit here, right? So if you can think it, they can build it. They can do so much more than what I've even talked about in this one video. And that's why it's important to understand what they're doing with these consolidated collections. When they took over all these different NFT projects, this is their business plan. They're trying to build real value back to the NFT holders. So you can see that in this game. You can see that in many of the other games in my YouTube. You can definitely hit the like and subscribe if you want to see for, uh, you know, future content about all the stuff that they're building and developing as it comes out. Definitely get into their AMAs. Uh, UASO does one every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. EST in the UASO Discord. You don't want to miss it because Matt is always spewing alpha in there. And he's always leading on to secrets and different things that they're doing behind the scenes. And it's truly special. Um, just the things that, again, this team can do. I can't stress it enough. So here we go. Um, I just, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a claim. I'm going to walk you through the process real quick. So basically my MetaMask notification came up. What I do is it gives you site suggested gas. What I do is I click that where it says site suggested and then it pulls up low market or aggressive. What I do is I pick the market gas and then I just go down and I hit confirm. And then I wait for the transaction to confirm. And then I look at my wallet and boom, I've got some of the Pepe game tokens, right? Usually takes, you know, about 10 to 30 seconds or so. But then that claim is usually, you know, drops in your wallet rather quick. So um, definitely, definitely worth checking out. Definitely worth checking out this game. It's so easy to play. Like I said, just hitting the space bar, just something to do while you're bored. Um, you know, and always get out there and share content. If you're in there playing these games, there it is. My transaction just confirmed and I got, let's see how many, how many did I get? So I don't know. I think probably about 10, 15,000, uh, Pepe game tokens. So uh, again, pretty cool stuff. Definitely check out my other videos. If you haven't gotten into the Confluence yet, do so. Get into the Confluence. Get into Fray X. Start playing these games. The community has been coming together on Saturday mornings to play these games, to play Fray X against each other, to team battle, uh, capture the flag, whatever it may be inside of the first-person shooter game. If you need instructions on how to download my featured video here, hit that, and you can see download instructions, how to download, for, uh, you know, the Confluence, Fray X, and WinRAR, how to do the extraction, all that stuff. I laid it out there, so simple. Definitely get in these gamifications, get on the scoreboard, start earning those credits in-game because those are going to bear rewards in the future. And you definitely want to hold some of the NFTs from all of these partnering collections. Make sure you get your U-Bots, your Gen 1s. Make sure you're, you're scooping up the new era floor of Cubex. Shiba is about to do a, a morph as well. Goonies will also follow Bunny Buddies, Party 8 Billionaire Club. 
once those are consolidated or even before, start scooping the floor, start getting those things up so that you could be share in those DAOs and what they're building in their gamifications because the future is DAO. God bless you all. I am out.